All right, hello, and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine, and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today, I am delighted to be joined by Molly Sider, who is in Chicago, Illinois. How are you doing, Molly? I'm great. Thanks for having me, John. Absolutely. And Molly is the host of the I Am This Age, the podcast proving it's never too late. You're never too old. So go do that. <laughs> you're, always, you're always talking about certified professional life coach, storyteller, motivational speaker, and real life change maker in her 40s. Oh, there you go. You are putting your... <laughs> Molly believes the most efficient way to create peace inside and out is by sharing stories and listening to others share theirs. Um, so, um, so Molly, um, when you say like it's not too late to achieve things or to you know to go after your goals, but and and your story is is critical to this journey. What what do you mean by your story? Well, I mean, you know, we all have stories. People are always like, I don't have any stories. I don't have any stories mm -hmm. to tell. And um, to that, I say, all we have are stories. That's all we do, right? We tell each other stories. We call our friends on the phone and we share our stories. Mm -hmm. We share stories over the dinner table. But we also tell ourselves stories. And that's mostly what I'm talking about. Right. Um, and so, you know, we we have we often have these stories that we tell ourselves and and oftentimes they're um kind of icky um oftentimes they create a belief about ourselves that is bad something like you know we're not good enough we're not smart enough we're not worthy we're not lovable whatever and um the point is that to share these stories you know and however you do it or with mm -hmm. whomever, um, you know, find somebody who is trustworthy um, and who is um, and who is, you know, willing to listen, but also who is worthy of your story. Um, get it out there, um, because what happens is you create connection and that creates empathy. But we don't do that because we're afraid. We're so afraid that if we share our stories with the world, that the world is going to reflect back at us what we already believe to be true about ourselves. And again, that's usually something negative, like, mm -hmm. you know, we're not worthy, yeah. et cetera. Um, so by sharing these stories with people, again, you create empathy, you create connection you get that feeling, you get that, you, um, what ends up happening is that the world doesn't actually reflect back at you what you believe to be true about yourself. The world reflects back to you something like, excuse me, something like me too. Right. I felt that way also. You know, of course you're feeling that way. Anyone would feel that way. Something like that. And then what happens is like all of that sort of shame, all those fears and insecurities, all of those negative self-beliefs um lightens up and um we can let go of it and then we can really get to the bottom of who we are and what we want in life and what our values are and we can sort of redirect our energy yeah there's a couple of interesting things i just wanted to come back on there um i mean number one is we're, we're sometimes the worst people aren't we to assess like to look back and assess the journey we've come on because as you say mm -hmm it through a particular lens so having someone else I, I've, I've sometimes been through that process where people were you know trying to help them with resumes or whatever stuff like that and they always go oh you know I haven't really done much I don't have a good track record but when you it, when you sit down and you talk to them and you suddenly go you, you got great look at the great stuff you did look you overcame this this is a great so we're, we're not always the best people to review our own stories are we that's exactly right. That's exactly right. Um, I just had that experience yesterday um, mm -hmm. because I have, you know, coaches and therapists and a team of people mm -hmm. I work with also because I also need this reminder. Um, and sometimes I'm all, you know, yesterday I was having a moment where I was like, you know, ah, it's been, you know, what, what have I done over the past 10 years? And mm -hmm. my coach is like, um, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you need me to remind you. Um. So yeah, we need those reminders and we need to be able to talk that out with somebody. We can't do it alone. That's another like hill that I'm, that I'll go and die on because I'm like, we can't do things alone. We're not made to do things alone as human beings. We need each other. And I think a lot of us um, have been taught to sort of muscle through by ourselves and you can't, it's, it's not natural to us. We need each other. So we need somebody to bounce ideas off of and we need to tell our stories and um, we need to, you know, 
In other words, we just need to get comfortable talking about ourselves. Yeah, no, it, it, absolutely. And, and the other thing uh, that I just made a note of there that you mentioned is, is being careful, obviously, uh, and selective in who you choose to share your story with, because as you said, worthy of hearing your story. And I think that's a really important piece, because if you don't think you have a worthwhile story, if you don't think well of yourself, I mean, you're and you will you will almost automatically find the wrong people to share that with who will validate. Let's face it, we're very good at finding validation or proof, so-called proof points to back up our, our negative perceptions of ourselves. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, yeah, we, we're always, it's very easy, as you say, to find um, to find proof of whatever story <laughs> that we've been telling ourselves is. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's really important to find the right people. And maybe that's, um, you know, your partner, maybe that's your parent, maybe that's your best friend, or maybe that's, you know, your therapist or coach. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really important to find those people. Or maybe it's, like in my experience, this is, this is, I'm not saying that everyone should go do this, but I'm a storyteller. I get up on stages and tell true personal narratives. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's really therapeutic and that creates connection. And it's a little bit easier for me to be vulnerable in, I know that sounds strange to a lot of people probably, but for me, I struggle with vulnerability like many people. Um, I also understand that it's the most important thing we need to do in order to be able to create this kind of empathy and connection. Um, but for me, somehow it feels a little bit safer to get up on a stage. There's enough like um, there's enough of a, um, a, a disconnection yeah. or disconnect between like me and an audience. Um, and I can get up on, on stage and tell really personal stories. And then afterwards, what happens is like always somebody comes up to me and they're like, thank you so much for telling that story. That was really important to share. And I've had a similar experience and I needed to hear that, something like that. And for me, that's huge. Now, again, I'm not saying, not telling everybody else to go up on a stage and tell a story unless that sounds like fun to you. Um, but it's important to find, like you said, the person um, who will be able to listen to you and who will be able to, um, you know, to um to accept and to um and to absorb that connection and and that empathy and to be able to be open up and be vulnerable too and so you just have to like sort of find that person but they're always out there you know and if you're scared to do it start with a journal <laughs> yeah that, uh, yeah that's it that's that's a great idea and and the other part too is uh is yeah it's great if you have a friend or family member or whatever but sometimes you may be better off going and finding the independent person, whether it's the coach or therapist, whatever, because yeah. at the end of the day, that person, their only interest is in you and their only investment is helping you. They're not bringing any preconceived notions or ideas or whatever. And I think that's sometimes, so I think that selection process <clears throat> can be very, is very important and you need to figure out, are you better off with somebody completely independent? Yeah, that's right. And, you know, oftentimes we need all of the above, right? Right. Um, it's really important to have somebody like a coach or a therapist who, like you said, it's who ensures that the conversation is your agenda and not theirs. Mm -hmm. Right. And they're, and you know, friends are great and friends are really important to have. Mm -hmm. And, um, oftentimes friends think that they're giving some great advice, but it's really their agenda. It's about them. It's not about you and what's happening in your experience and coaches and therapists, you know, obviously are trained to not do that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yes, that's, we need all of the above. Like, it's so important to have a coach and, and a therapist and just like gather your team of people. Um, again, like I'm always talking about teams, who's on your team. We can't do anything alone. Um, you know, uh, professional athletes, like they don't get where they are without a team of people to support them. What makes us think that we can, you know? Yeah, no, I, no, I, I agree 100%. The other thing I wanted to come back to is this notion of vulnerability, right? Because it, I, I feel like it means different things to different people and therefore it'd be good just for what what your definition is. Because to a lot of people that sounds like, you know, when you say, oh, you know, be vulnerable, that sounds like, it sounds like a lot and it sounds like very like, well, this doesn't come naturally to me or like, what does it mean vulnerable? Do I just start sharing everything? Do I just, you know, it, I, I think people understand the concept, but the execution of it is very different. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's some, again, like it's something that I still struggle with. Um, but 
you know, vulnerability is hard. I think, you know, again, like a lot of us grew up learning that vulnerability is weak, is weakness mm -hmm. somehow. Um, you know, feeling like being needy, needing other people is weakness, like all of that. And um, so vulnerability, A, is hard for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, and it also, um, it also might sound something like, hey, I'm struggling with X, Y, and Z, I need some help. Or, you know, telling your partner, like, I'm feeling anxious right now, and this is why. Or even just saying I love you first or you know there's so many um different ways that vulnerability that vulnerability shows up in your life and in relationships and for me as somebody who is constantly working on getting better at this um and who for a long time I should I should say like I was an immensely private person for mm -hmm. so long I still am um but you know, there are moments where I'm, I want to maybe tell my partner something or, um, but I'm afraid to, I'm afraid to open up. I'm afraid, you know, how he's going to respond. Is he going to, um, is he going to, you know, acknowledge and validate me? Is he going to, what is he going to say? You know, I get, I get nervous and then I have to remind myself like, oh, that's vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And I want to do that. I want to be better at vulnerability. So I'm going to go do that thing. But I have to remind myself so often, like, oh, this is what vulnerability feels like. It feels scary and it feels icky and it feels like I want to run away from it mm -hmm. a lot of the time. Um, and also to your point of like, well, how do you do that? And like, is it just like sharing everything? No, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not. Um, you can, you know, it's really important again to to pick and choose what you share and with whom you share it. Um, you don't have to just go up on the stage like I do and just <laughs> share your like intimate experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, and even when I do that, I'm picking and choosing, you yeah. know, which stories I'm telling and to which audiences, but, um, yeah, pick and choose and, and be thoughtful about it and, um, start out, you know, small, if you're not used to doing this, it's practice makes per perfect and, um, or, you know, it'll never be perfect. It will never be perfect. That's the other, that's the other yeah. piece. Like, especially if you are uncomfortable, if you've never done this before, but even as you continue to practice, it's going to feel wobbly. It's going to feel awkward. It's not going to come out right all the time. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. That's part of vulnerability. It's yeah. Okay. Look, looking, looking for progress rather than perfection. Yeah. And also everyone's feeling that way. We're all afraid of it. You know, this is why we're talking about it right now, right? Because like we're all afraid of vulnerability. Yeah. I was listening to Brené Brown the other day and she was saying something like um, vulnerability is the thing that like we don't want anyone else to see in us, but it's the first thing we look like we look for in other people. Mm. Yeah. And, and I guess there's, there's probably a part of it, too, is is. Um, you know, flipping it and maybe making maybe a good starting point too is making yourself available to other people. Like, are you listening to other people's stories or showing an interest in other people? Maybe providing an environment where other people feel safe to, to share um, as well, because it's a two it's a two way street, right? Yeah, absolutely. Vulnerability invites vulnerability, um, one hundred percent. You know, one of the things that I think that like. I do that I'm that I am really good at is creating that sort of safe space mm -hmm. for people to, to open up and share their stories. So like on my podcast or with clients that I work with, um, it, it's it, part of that is that a I'm a good listener, you know, and I'm asking um, challenging or empowering questions, but I'm also validating and um, acknowledging experiences and also willing to be vulnerable myself. So mm -hmm. Like, yeah, of course that would happen to you. God, you know what? Me too. That's happened mm -hmm. to me. I have felt that way before. Yeah. And just, it's just like that connection. It's like everything just gets lighter. All of that, all of the fears and insecurities just sort of like get so much lighter. You don't have to, we spend so much energy hiding who we really are and what we really are feeling and fearing because of this fear of, of, you know, what, how we think the world is going to reflect back at us mm -hmm. and we don't have, you know, we have only, we have limited energy. Energy is like <laughs> currency, right? So think about how 
much lighter and how much more um, free energy you will have once you get this stuff out in the open and it's so scary at first and it gets easier and easier Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you have all this like freed up energy to redirect towards the things that you really care about and the things that you really want to do in your life and it's a lot easier to get to the bottom of to go all the way back to like your very first question um, about my podcast it's a lot easier to get to the bottom of who you are at your core what your core values are versus what you think you're supposed to value. Um, and from there you can actually figure out like, okay, wait, what do I want to do with the rest of my life? And Mm -hmm. am I doing the thing that I want to do? Am I happy? Do I feel purposeful? What would make me feel more purposeful? You know, all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's really, it's really fascinating. And, and like you said, I mean, being able to, it's somewhat in somewhat unburden yourself, but I think it's also like some people I think probably be afraid of oh well if I started being vulnerable like the floodgates would open I'd never stop, but uh, but the the fact is I mean you ha- you have to obviously take a, a practical approach to these things as well I mean you can't go from one extreme one extreme to the other, but I do think that that creating that space to be able to have conversations is really is really really important today especially i mean you think about it molly now the amount of people who are remote who are virtual or whatever who never like meet face to face so a lot of the issues maybe within work are being exacerbated almost yeah you mean can Uh, you expand more on that (laughs) because people are not are, are maybe more virtual so they're more humanly disconnected um that it may you may actually have to work harder as an organization or whatever to create that environment where people can can interact in a in a in a a more positive way and not kind of fall into you know just being these remote people who we never about (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah absolutely this is so important like in workplaces and organizations and businesses too um you know first of all, there, there has to be space for people to actually be themselves and whole human, even at work. And, um, you know, the other part to this is like, uh, you know, people don't, people don't trust businesses, right? People trust the people behind the businesses Mm -hmm. and, um, you don't trust people unless you actually like know a little bit about them. And if they're willing to be a little bit vulnerable, you know, once somebody shares a story with you, all of a sudden you're like, Oh, this person is just a human, just like me going through life, just like me with all the same, you know, problems and questions just like me. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's really important to consider that even within the workplace and especially, yeah, as everyone's like working remotely and feeling that disconnect, it's extra, extra important. Yeah, no, I know. Absolutely. And then just, just in, in, in finishing, um, what would you advise somebody as a really, as a good starting point? If somebody's listening to this and saying, wow, like this resonates with me, but I just don't know how to start on this journey. Yeah. Um, start by listening to other people share their stories. Because again, vulnerability invites vulnerability. And when you listen, I mean, it's, it's so important to share your stories. It's just as important to listen to other people share theirs. Mm -hmm. And, um, so start there and just, you know, there are tons of podcasts and books and, you know, you can go hear speakers talk and whatever, even just really listen to your friends share a story and listen, you know, try and listen without judgment and just gathering information and ask, you know, questions. Start there because I guarantee you, you will feel that connection and that empathy that we're talking about. Um, You'll find some sort of like me too moment of like I have felt that too wow it's like you're reading my mind wow we're the same person or you know some some sort of moment like that um that's a great place to start and just notice yeah because one of the things recently just to underline what you just said is there's been a lot of like survey data and all that coming out but the, the number one thing is that people crave is to be seen heard and understood it sounds really simple right but it's not uh and I think to your point is, and you mentioned this earlier, is like if you are listening to somebody, rec- really listen and validate what they're saying, because that's the biggest gift that you can give to someone. It's the biggest compliment you can give to somebody is if they realize that you actually are listening and actually trying to understand and taking the trouble to validate that you're getting it right. 
Yeah, that's so, so true. And I, that's so funny that you say that because I'm always like, all we ever want is like, everyone, no matter what religion, race, what part of the world you're in, we, all we want besides like basic food and shelter is to be seen, heard, loved and respected. That's all anybody wants. So like any sort of like fear, any sort of aggression, war, <laughs> all yeah. of that stems from this like innate need to feel seen, heard, loved and respected. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so yes to exactly what you just said yeah so there you go there's a great <laughs> finish on is instead of uh instead of just sitting back and waiting for this to happen to you is maybe you do it to other people maybe you go out and see here understand love respect other people and it'll come back on you well listen um all, uh, all of molly's information is going to be below this video but before we go please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do um so first of all, thank you so much for having me on. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, so I am a podcast host and a um, and a life coach. And on my podcast, as you mentioned in the beginning, it's called I Am This Age. And um, I interview people who have made big life changes beyond the age of 40. So proof that it's never too late, you're never too old. So go do that thing you're always talking about. And we get into the stories and the details, but mostly I get into like the thoughts, feelings, emotions, the fears and insecurities that they felt while going through or making those big changes and how they navigated through them. Because that's, you know, as we know, the most important, most helpful piece. Um, and that's also what I do with my clients. So, um, big transition stuff. Um, and yeah, that's it. Excellent. Well, I'd encourage people to go, go check it out. And, you know, particularly if you're at a stage in your life and you're, you've had that niggling thing in the back of your mind about, you know, oh, maybe I'd want to do this and I kind of like this or whatever. Well, go check out Molly and uh, her services and see if uh, maybe this is the right time for you to listen to the podcast. Maybe this is the right time for you to, to make that jump. So listen then. Thanks again, Molly. Thank you for watching and listening. I'll see you all again very soon. Thanks so much. Yeah.